Hello guys, welcome back to the woods, and this is uh, my next episode on my campfire chat video. So this week I'm going to uh, talk about batoning and why I uh, use a tomahawk. So let's start this off with the tomahawk. I get asked a lot of the time, why a tomahawk? Why not an axe? Why a hatchet? Tomahawks are expensive. My Fisker's axe that I get from Canadian Tire Works has been serving me well for the last 20 years, yada, yada, yada. And you know what? I don't doubt that. And honestly, there's plenty of uh, great axes out there. If you're willing to spend down to 30 bucks from uh, your local big box brand all the way up to a, the fancy uh, Swedish made axes that are all the rage in the bush calf community. I chose a tomahawk because for one simple reason. A lot of those axes are designed for chopping down trees. I mean, why else do you get an axe, right? I don't cut down big trees. Uh, most of the stuff that I scrounge for a fire or if I'm doing shelter making is going to be stuff that I find on the forest floor. It's honestly conservation of effort. Uh, it's easier for me to scrounge and a lot more manageable than than for me to try to go cut down big massive trees uh, especially for the type of camping I do and, and leave no trace I prefer not to cut down huge trees uh, so for me from what I find on the forest floor a tomahawk is big enough to cut up anything I've, I've found so far also there's a bit of a practicality side to it if you look at it the way I look at my kit and my concepts a tomahawk is basically the multi-tool of the axe world. If you're an ultralight camper, you can break down the head from the handle and you can carry the two of them separate to break up the weight. If for some reason you break the handle, you can use the undamaged head to manufacture yourself a new handle. And you can use the head in a variety of tasks uh, just by itself, as in skinning, like a, I believe the uh, it's called an ulu knife. You can use it like that. Uh, also, being the weight and the size that it is, uh, you, I find the tomahawk a lot more handier. You can actually carve feather sticks with a, with a tomahawk quite handily rather than using a hatchet or an axe. Uh, that's the big reasons why I, I chose a tomahawk. Uh, there, there is another reason, and I'll allude to that in a second, but it goes right along with the same reason why I have a tomahawk. Again. I'm not taking down huge trees. Most of my stuff is scrounging. So for me, the inclusion of a small handsaw, a tomahawk, and a good, reliable, durable knife that's designed to take the abuse of bushcraft and the outdoors is essential. And notice I highlight that, because not all knives are suitable for batoning. And this is where a lot of people complain about their knives breaking, et cetera, et cetera, all right? So as you saw in my last video, I'm a big fan of the Becker BK2. This is a full tang, basically a quarter inch chunk of steel that's sharpened into a very uh, it's sharp and it's sharpened into a very nice blade. It's got a lot of belly to it, all right? So this is designed to do all of the chopping, gouging, batoning, tasks that a bushcrafter would do. In fact, I think the designer actually, when he designed this knife, had all those tasks in mind. So for those of you that are possibly new or don't under, don't know what batoning is, the process of batoning is using your knife to break down smaller pieces of wood into more manageable pieces, suitable for use as uh, small kindling uh, or timber, etc., etc. You're not going to cut cut down any big massive trees with this. You're not splitting logs that are any more than wrist size with batoning. That's when you start worrying about jamming your blade into a tree. And that's when you get laughed at, right? So just as a quick little effective demonstration. So we have our piece of kindling that we want to cut. We place our knife blade on top and we gently on the spine. Once we seat the blade, we'll then continue to tap on the spine and then 
tap on the full part of the, of the tip to split the knife or to split the wood. From there, we can now, again, doing the same process as before, process it down even further. The reason why I like this is I find it's more manageable. I find it's easier to do sitting, which is less chance of driving it into your legs or into your uh, feet. It's more manageable, but because you're setting the blade in, you're not swinging a blade or anything like that. You're purposely placing the blade down and you're applying direct force to the spine as long as your knife can handle it. And it's more manageable, especially when you get the smaller parts. And I know and I say that because I'll tell you the story of the thing that really propelled me forward to learn about batoning and tomahawks and effectively how to use bladed weapons in the world. Well, refine. Let's say refine because I've had a lifetime of experience of using hatch, uh, axes and hatchets. But I went back to school when this incident happened. So I was at Fundy National Park a couple of years ago with my son doing a father-son camping trip. So, lazy dog days of summer. We weren't doing much. It was warm. We decided to sit down. My son decided to take an afternoon nap and I decided to get supper on the go. So we were doing a stew over the fire in a Dutch oven that, that night. So I was really looking forward to it. So my son went, you know, went down to ground and I got the fire going and I got the, the stew on. So, being the dog days of summer, and, you know, what else do you do when you sit around a fire and just watch it burn and you have a couple of drinks? Well, one turned to two, two turned to five, and then the fire started to go out. So, in my state, like a dumbass, I grabbed a small piece of wood with my hatchet at the time, not a tomahawk. I held the wood like this and proceeded to try to split the wood down the middle. Well, as you can imagine, like a dummy and being half inebriated, I ended up taking a quarter of my finger off. Because I was inebriated, I couldn't drive myself to a hospital. So I had to sober up enough to drive myself to a hospital, which took considerable time. All the meanwhile, as I was sobering up, my finger was throbbing, missing a quarter of a chunk of it, bleeding through all the bandages that I had. And I had to do dressing changes at night by a headlamp until I sobered up enough to pack everything up and drive myself to the hospital an hour away. After that experience, I went home and I started some, doing some research reevaluated my setup and finally came to the tool set that I use now in the woods and the skill set that, that I've learned and now that I employ. So, always remember tool safety in the woods. Find a way to do it that works for you. That's above everything. Safe. And secondly, is, a, is uh, effective and doesn't destroy your tools. All right, guys. Thanks again for tuning in uh, to this week's edition of Campfire Chats. To my new subscribers, welcome. To my old subscribers, welcome back. Uh, thank you. If you like this, uh, like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification to uh, receive all my updates when I upload. So I upload on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, if you find any of this information useful, pass it around to your friends, get them to come visit. And we're going to tune in uh, next time on Campfire Chats, and I'll see you again on my Duck, uh, my duck uh, Mountain playlist. All right.